everybody. Uh, you probably don't know me. That's right. That's why I'm going to tell you who I am. I, I, I am the editor of Rumbo. Have you seen the bilingual newspaper Rumbo? Yeah. What? Yep. I have to read everything. How many of you um, like to write? Nice, nice. Let me tell you something. If you write and you become good at it, you can have the whole world open to you. Not just as a writer, but in any profession that you go into, it is necessary to write well. Whether you are a doctor, an engineer, a computer technician, anything, you must be able to write well. So that's one skill that you should make sure that you're good at, uh, that you excel. Um, I wanted to write since I was 11 years old. I started writing poetry. So I found this book, Amelia Bedelia, The Cup Reporter. And this talks about the most difficult part of a newspaper, at least for me it is. And it is coming up with the headlines, the title of the stories. And you'll see how funny it is. Amelia Bedelia, you probably have read some of the books of Amelia Bedelia. Yeah. Well, this one is. Oh, yeah. Amelia Bedelia had just served breakfast. Where's the paper? asked Mr. Rogers. Paper? said Amelia Bedelia. What kind of paper would you like? No paper, wallpaper, toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> the newspaper, said Mr. Rogers. I cannot spare my day without it. The paper is late, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll go see if it has been delivered. When Amelia Bedelia opened the door, a voice hollered, duck! Amelia Bedelia did not see any ducks. The only thing she saw was a newspaper coming right at her. Amelia Bedelia ducked. Just in the nick of time, bam, went the newspaper on the window. Crash, clink, went the broken uh, window. Uh, a boy rode his bike up the front walk. I am so sorry, he said. I'm Peter, your paper boy. A paper boy, and she had this image in her head. Newspaper, a, a paper cut out of kids. A paper boy, said Amelia Bedelia. You look mighty solid to me. What's the commotion, asked Mr. Rogers. Are you all right? I'm fine, said Amelia Bedelia. Our paper boy broke the window by mistake. Don't worry, son, said Mrs. Rogers. We will fix it. It's only a small pain. That's right, said Amelia Bedelia. A larger window is a big pain to fix. Pane of glass, P-A-N-E. A big pain to fix, P-A-I-N. So she's, she's already playing with words. I'll buy a new window, said Mr. Rogers. Let Mrs. Rogers do that, said Amelia Bedelia. She loves to go window shopping. Window shopping? Uh huh. Shopping for window or looking at the windows. It could be used both ways. Peter took a camera out of his bag. Thanks for not getting mad. May I take you a picture for my paper? We're doing stories on our best customers. Everyone gather for the picture. Cheese! I'd like to say money! money. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> Amelia Bedelia didn't see any cheese. She figured Peter was joking. So she smiled like Mr. and Mrs. Rogers. Peter got back on his bike and said, I have to deliver the rest of these papers. On my way to school, but now I'm late. Let me help you, said Amelia Bedelia. Mrs. Roger waved and called out, take the rest of the day off. 
They made a good team. Peter carried the papers. Amelia Virgilia tossed the papers. She hit every porch and missed every window. Peter got to school right on time. The principal, Mr. Owens, was outside to greet the students. Peter introduced Amelia Virgilia to him. She knows newspapers, said Peter. She could work on the school scoop. School scoop is the name of the school newspaper. Then, this is our lucky day, said Mr. Owens. Now, who's Mr. Owens? The principal. Our school paper is due out tomorrow, but the parent who helps with it is ill. Would you work with us? Asked Peter. Sounds like fun. That's the spirit, said Mr. Owens. Come and meet your cub reporters. Cubs? Hmm, said Amelia Bedelia. I thought that reporters would be kids. They are, said Mr. Owens. They are called cub reporters when they are young and new on the job. Does anybody want to be my cub reporter? Me. Yeah. When they arrived at the school paper, Mr. Owens hollered, stop the presses. <coughs> A girl looked up, smiled, and said, we don't use printing presses anymore. We do everything on the computer. I knew that, said Mr. Owens. In an old movie, I once saw the editor yell, stop the presses, <laughs> whatever he found a mistake. I've always wanted to say that. I say that to my husband also every now and then, stop the presses. And he looks at me like, I'm soft. The principal introduced Amelia Bedelia. Meet your new editor. And that's me. Please send her your stories and photos. She will write the headlines. Oh, God. And put everything together in the paper. That's the most difficult part, remember. Sounds simple, said Amelia Bedelia. Then we print copies for Peter to deliver. No, said Peter, there is no paper boy. The school scoop is delivered by computer. Peter is right, said Mr. Owens. Your, our newspaper is available online. Got it, said Amelia, Amelia Bedelia. I put things online every day. Excellent, said the principal. Everyone gets a copy instantly, even my boss, the superintendent. See what she had in mind? Online? Is it like a clothing? Line? Line? Uh-huh, laundry, yes. Line is laundry. As he was leaving, Mr. Owens gave them some advice. To be a good reporter, he said, keep this in mind. If a dog bites a man, that is not news. But if a man bites a dog, that is news. No one had a clue what he meant. They all nodded away to be polite. Um, there was so much going on in the school. Amelia Bedelia assigned the last story, just as the bell rang for classes to begin, like library news, school play, chess club, gardening class, all of those assignments, and then the reporter or photographer that was going to cover it, Laura and Ron, Chris and Mark, as the kids filed into the hallway, Amelia Bedelia gave them some advice too. You cubs, be careful. Don't get bitten and do not bite any dogs. <laughs> Amelia Bedelia said right to work. Just when she got used to the school computer, the stories began to come in. She wrote a headline for each story. She was very smart. The library was quieter than usual. The squeaky rocking chair used for story time had been sent out to be repaired. So she wrote a story about that, and what did she call the story? No. Librarian of her rocker. Now, when you hear that expression, what do you think of? Me. Someone who's not well. Oh. Uh-huh. So it could have a funny meaning, it stick to the story, but it's a play with words. 
During the rehearsal of the school play, some scenery fell over onto the actors. See, the lamp smashed on the actors. So what did she call the story? School play, a big hit. Uh -huh. <laughs> At the chess tournament, both players moved their knights early in the game. What did she call the story? Knights battle in the gym. While he was being interviewed, the gardener, the gardening teacher tripped over a bucket. Gardner kicks, kicks the bucket. The bucket. When, when you hear somebody say, kick the bucket, what do you think of? <laughs> no? It's usually somebody died, kick the bucket. But in this case, he really kicked the bucket. No, 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 he didn't. It's just a play with words. <laughs> Is the play with words. You see that, you see the headline, and you say, oh my God, the gardener died. No, he didn't. He just kicked the bucket. Uh -huh. Two new bear cubs were spotted during the zoo field trip. So what's the title of the story? Cub reporters report on cubs. Because they're called cub reporters. So you're talking... Mm -hmm. The school nurse offered every student the chance to visit her new office. Uh -huh. What's the story? Every, every, every kid every will get a shot. <laughs> nah, needles, needles. We don't do that type of shooting. <laughs> During, oh, this is a good one. During a fire safety lesson, the chief said that he forgot to use sunscreen on his recent vacation. Fire chief burn. Now you got that one. But no, he got burned with the sun. Uh, the eggs incubating in the fourth grade classroom finally hatched. Fourth grade full of cute chicks. Uh, are we talking about cute girls? Yes! No! Cute chicks! But you can use the same word different ways. Amelia Bedelia took a break to report on a story herself. On her way back to the office, she ran into Mr. Owens. I did a story on the cafeteria, said Amelia. Great! Did you get a hot scoop? I got two scoops, but they were both cold. Hmm, that's too bad, said the principal. Will you still make the deadline? Deadlines are very serious in a newspaper. When the paper has to be ready, you have to be on that de deadline. No problem, said Amelia. My story is the last one. Amelia Virgilia had taste tested a different type of hot dog in the cafeteria. She was sure Mr. Owens would love her story. After all, it was his idea of news. She hit send and the school scoop was on its way to everyone, electronically. The next morning, Amelia Virgilia returned to tidy up. Mr. Owens burst into the room. Stop the presses! He loves to say that. Stop the computers, stop everything. What happened? Asked Amelia Bedelia. Is there a big story we need to cover? You bet there is, said the principal. We can report, you can report on me getting fired. My boss is coming here to talk to me about the newspaper you put out. Oh, so he's fired. So she's in trouble. No, no, not that kind of fired. Fired from his job. No, you're See, you, you're, you're doing it right. You're using fire in two different ways. What's wrong? Ask Amelia Bedelia. 
I published it before the deadline. Look at your headlines, said Mr. Owen. They are so sensational. Thank you, said Amelia Bedelia. Don't thank me. That kind of sensational is no good. Now our school sounds like a big city. Before Amelia Bedelia could apologize, the superintendent burst into the room. Mr. Owens, there you are. My phone has been ringing nonstop. Parents are calling about your newspaper. They want to know who is responsible. I can explain. Uh, explain what, said the superintendent. Everyone loves the latest issue. Parents, teachers, students. They do, said Mr. Owens. I mean, of course, they do. I knew that. Mm -hmm. He was surprised. It's a hit, the superintendent said. Your school sounds exciting and fun. And those headlines, they are, are sensational, suggested Amelia Bedelia. Oh, you're good. Yeah. You're going to make a good writer. Yeah. What does it mean? It's a hit. <laughs> a hit is a success. No, the, the newspaper is a hit. It's a success. Exactly, said the superintendent. I roared when I read Woman Bites Dog. That's my favorite, too, said Mr. Owens. Meet Abil Amelia Bedelia. She wrote that. Glad you liked it, said Amelia. I wrote it the way I saw it, and that's all. <laughs> Keep up the good work, said the superintendent to Mr. Owens. Maybe one day you'll have my job. Really? said Mr. Owens. When that happens, said Amelia Bedelia, I've got the perfect headline. Principal becomes super superintendent. That was good. After the superintendent left, Mr. Owens turned to Amelia Bedelia. I cannot thank you enough, he said. You are sensational in a good way. I knew that, said Amelia Bedelia. A week later, Mr. and Mrs. Rogers had just sat down to breakfast when the doorbell rang. Please see who it is, said Mrs. Rogers, and see if my paper is here. Amelia Bedelia returned with Peter. Special delivery. He handed Mr. Rogers his paper. Thank you, said Mr. Rogers. My windows thank you, too. My pleasure. I wanted to show you your story. Peter held up the front page and said, I got to write the article, too. Congratulations, said Amelia Bedelia. You are not a cub anymore. A breaking story. He called his article about breaking the window. Uh huh. It's supposed to be news. Well, what a clever idea, said Mrs. Rogers. A paper boat, a boy who broke into reporting by breaking a window. I love your headline, said Amelia Bedelia. I couldn't have done it better myself. So there, I go through a lot writing the headlines because it has to be short. Uh, my husband, when he writes a story, the, the headlines are a mile long and I have a hard time cutting it back. Uh, it should be three, four words, something really brief that gives the reader the message of what the story is going to be about. It's, some people call it a hook, that the hook should attract the attention that you want to read the article. So anybody has any questions for a newspaper person? Uh -huh. Did you like the story, first of all? Yes. 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 <laughs> you have a question? But why do dogs like biting melons? <laughs> melons, but I don't know. <laughs>
It depends. It takes if it's something out of my imagination, I can just sit there and in a half hour fill a page because it's all here. But if it's something that I have to make telephone calls, that I have to check, that I had to get documentation, sometimes I call the library to find out the, the truth about something, that may take me days. Because when you write a newspaper, you have to make sure that you know what you're writing and that it is the truth. I have my own column in the paper where I can write my opinion and I say anything I want there, but I have to stick to the truth because if I don't, people can take me to court, it's going to cost me an attorney fees, and it's going to be embarrassing if somebody says you lied. But in my column, I can talk about my personal opinion. The rest of the paper is just facts. Sometimes I have a story about something that happened, and I write the fact, what happened, what went on, what was said. Then in my column, I said, he's nothing but a liar, <laughs> because this and this and this is the truth. That's what we're working on. We have some issues with fact and opinion. Uh-huh. So difference. I am very, very careful about what I write in the paper, the articles, <coughs> and then in my column. So what's and the facts, guys? The things that are what? True. 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 You can prove. And what's the opinion? How you feel? You feel. Very good. It's well, a fact. That's a fact. I can hear you. Many, many years ago, I wrote a book myself. I don't think they have it in this library. And it was two novels. Two novels, uh, pure imagination. Uh, I sat down, I was bored, I enjoyed writing, and I had a very vivid imagination. I imagined boyfriends and beautiful places to visit with my boyfriend, and uh, I wrote the stories. What? And uh, I published it. Word many years ago and I haven't done anything like that anymore because my mind developed and I'm not that romantic little girl that I used to be. Now I'm hard hitting. I like reporting for uh, the newspaper. I've been doing this for 18 years now. I like reporting on facts. I like reporting on what goes on and I'd like to give information to people information that is going to make their lives better. Mm -hmm. How come some Awkward. of the words are so strong? How come some of the words are so small? They have to be, not only the words small, for example, I had a hard time last week writing about Northern Essex Community College graduation because the press release that they sent me, they used the word commencement. And it's too long to put in a title. Any space to huh? Any space to put It's in. not the space so much, but the fact that long words like that in a title, that you have to use few words and give a message in few words. When you use the word commencement, it takes up too much room, and then you have to go into two or three lines. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. When you get stuck, are you? Do you give up, or do you just keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Uh, you, you know what? I put it aside. And yeah, uh, and it happens with everything because sometimes you are so overwhelmed, and you go over the issue, the problem, so many times what? that I just go to the bathroom. I have a drink of water. I come back the next day, and take it up. Because, and usually when I come back to it, instantly I have the answer. Your mind is refreshed and uh, you don't labor over a problem or over a doubt. See, so she doesn't give up on it. She comes back to it afterwards. Yeah. Never give up. Never cooking. 
It's a very good profession. My mother didn't want me to. My mother always said nobody can make a living out of writing. Yes, you Get can. Me now, for 18 years, I've been making a living out of it. And, uh, and it's something that I enjoy. And what I usually tell kids is whatever career you choose in the future, make sure it's something that you have a passion for, something that you enjoy, something that you like. Because there is nothing worse than to do a job that you don't like. And make sure that the most important thing, make sure that you have pride in yourself, that you value yourself as a person, and that you love your country. Very important things to get you through adulthood and through a professional life. Thank you so much. Now, let's have a cookie! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Fire Chief, that means I'm, I'm the big boss. <laughs> I give all the orders. Well, some of them. Okay, so we're going to read some stories this morning about firefighters. Do kids ever see who, this fellow on this? Who's that? Curious George. Okay, we're going to read a story about Curious George and his visit to the fire station. Do you guys ever go to the fire station? Yeah. Okay, the name of the story is Curious George and the Firefighters. And here's fire station number three. And this is George. Can you see all see George? Yeah. And this his his friend, right, with the yellow hat. Okay. And this this class, just like when you guys went to the fire station, right? And there's your teacher. What's your teacher's name? Miss Geisler. Looks just like her, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's no interpreter there. You're right. Not, not today. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this is George. This is his friend with the yellow hat. And this is the class that he's going in with to visit the fire station. Okay, now the fire chief looks just like me, right? Kind of fat with the big mustache. No. The fire chief was waiting for him right next to a big red fire truck, right? Welcome, he said, and he led everybody upstairs to begin their tour. Did you guys go upstairs to the fire station when you went there? No, right. It's not a good place for children to be upstairs in the fire station. Right, there's a fire pole in. We don't want anybody to fall down that fire pole. Okay, It's a long ways down. That's right, and if you didn't know how to slide down that pole, you could actually get very seriously hurt when you hit the hard cement floor at the bottom. Okay, but upstairs at the fire station, there was a kitchen with a big table, and there were snacks for everyone. Did you guys get snacks when you went to the fire station? No, gee, you're going to have to come back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fire chief told them all about being a firefighter. George tried hard to pay attention. George, curious George, right? But there were so many things for the monkey to explore, like that, shiny pole in the corner. What's the color of the pole? You remember? Yellow. Yellow, right. Just like my badge, right? Okay. So George was curious as to where did that pole go? Now you all know, because you saw it, right? Where's the pole go? Downstairs. Downstairs, right. From the second floor down to the first floor. So what do you think Curious George did? 
He slid down the pole. Of course, he's a monkey, right? He's a monkey, so he knows how to do it, right? And there, down at, on the first floor, was the great big fire truck. And also up on the wall, there was a map of the city. Did you guys see the map of the city when you were at the fire station? No, we didn't show that to you? Okay, you're going to have to come back again. All right, you're going to have to ask your teacher next year when you're in the second grade. You guys going to the second grade next year? No? <laughs> yeah, he went all the way down to the floor. Okay, and on the wall, you can see there's, a, there's fire hats, fire helmets hanging on the wall, and fire coats and boots. And there's the big red fire truck. So George had an idea. First, he stepped into a set of a pair of boots. Next, he picked out a helmet. And finally, George put on a jacket. And he was a firefighter. Suddenly, can you read this word? Ring. What's that mean? Right, it's the, the alarm bell, right? Ring. <laughs> That means that there's an alarm coming in for a fire. So the firefighters all rushed in. That's the signal for them that there's a fire and they need to go put on their gear, their helmets, their coats, their boots, and to get onto the fire truck. But Curious George had mixed them all up. So one of them said, this is not my helmet. Another one said, my boots are too big. Hurry, hurry, called the fire chief. A bright red light on the map of the city told him just where the fire was, and there was no time to waste. One by one, the firefighters jumped onto the fire truck, and so did George. Uh oh. The fire truck, with all the firefighters, sped out of the firehouse, and so did George. The siren screamed. What's that sound again? Ooh. Right. You got it. And the lights, red lights flashed. The truck turned right, and then it turned left. And again, you could hear the siren saying, what was it again? Ooh. Ooh, right. Very good. And when, the, when you hear the siren, what are you supposed to do? No, you're supposed to, well, that's what the firefighters do. When you hear the siren, when you hear the fire trucks coming down the street, that's when the alarm goes off inside your house. The smoke detectors, you're supposed to get out of your house. But when you hear a, the siren from a fire truck, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> no, you're supposed to get out of the way to let the fire truck go by. <laughs> Just like that, the fire truck and all the firefighters pulled up to a pizza parlor on Main Street, and smoke was coming out of a window in the back of the pizza parlor, and a crowd was gathering in the street. Thank goodness you're here, cried the cook. Must have burned the pizza, huh? The firefighters rushed off the truck and started unwinding their hoses. They knew just what to do. And George was ready to help. He climbed up on the hose reel of the fire truck. I don't know if you could see him up there. See him? Way up there. <laughs> One of the firefighters saw George trying to help, and he took George by the arm and led him out of the way. This is no place for a monkey, he said to George. You stay here where it is safe. No place for little children either when there's a fire. So George felt terrible, right? It's not a safe place. George sat on the bench and looked around. Next to him on the ground was a bucket full of baseballs. George reached in and took one out. It fit in his hand just right, like the apple he had had for a snack. So a little girl was watching George. He tried to give her the ball, but she was too frightened. George took another ball and another. 
Look, a boy said, the monkey is juggling. They took a ball from the cage and tossed it to George, but it went too high. George climbed up onto the fire truck to go get it. Now, George had four balls to juggle. See, if you watch her juggling, right, show them how to juggle. See, she's, if you can imagine that there's a ball in each hand, right, that's what the jugglers do. That's what George was doing with the balls. He threw the balls higher and higher. He juggled with his hands. Can you juggle with your feet? <laughs> no, I can try, maybe. <laughs> right, but a monkey can juggle with his feet, too. He could do all kinds of tricks. The boy threw another ball to George, and George threw a ball back to the boy. The little girl reached down and picked up a ball, too, and soon all the children were throwing and catching back and forth. I forgot all about the fire. <laughs> the fire chief came to tell everyone that the fire was out. And just then the little girl laughed and said, Look, Mummy, a fire monkey. Hey, called the fire chief. What are you doing up there? He's still up on top of the fire truck. What a wonderful idea, the little girl's mother said to the fire chief, bringing this brave little monkey to help children when they're frightened. Oh, the fire chief said, well, um, thank you. Before long, the fire truck was back at the firehouse, where a familiar voice called George. It was the man with the yellow hat. The little monkey had quite an adventure, said one of the firefighters. Is everyone all right? asked Mrs. Gray. Yes, it was just a small fire, said the fire chief, and George was a big help. Now the field trip was coming to an end, but there was one more treat in store. All the children got to take a ride around the neighborhood on the fire on the shiny red fire truck. Do you guys get to ride the fire truck? No, it's not a good idea for children to ride the fire truck. It's dangerous. But it's okay in the stories. Okay. And they each got their own, their own red fire helmet. Did you guys get any fire helmets when you came to the fire station? No? Next time you come, you ask for a fire helmet. Okay, we'll give you a fire helmet. And even George got a fire helmet. It was just the right size for a brave little monkey. That's it. That's the end. Okay, who here wants to be a firefighter when they grow up? Wow, lots of you. Okay, so do you know what you have to do to become a firefighter? What? You have to work for it. That's right. Okay. Now, that's right. You have to go to college. Wow, you you guys got a real good teacher. She taught you all these things. Okay, to be a firefighter, you have to go to school and you have to study real hard. And one of the most important things to do is when somebody like your teacher tells you what to do, you need to listen so that you hear exactly what she's telling you and you have to do it. Okay, so for instance, when, you, when your teacher tells you to be quiet, okay, you have to be quiet. It's so just like... You know, meet the fire chief, when I tell the firefighters that they need to be quiet, they need to be quiet. When I tell them that they have to go get the fire hose to put the fire out, that's what they have to do. You have to know how to listen and how to take orders, okay, if you want to be a firefighter. But again, the most important thing right now is that you need to study real hard. We need... Firefighters who know how to read and know how to write. You guys know how to write yet? Yeah, okay. And you, know, you need to have to be able to do your additions and your subtractions. All right, I'm going to read another story. I think we have time for one more story. Do we have time? How much? We have, we have time for another story. Okay. This is something that we do inside the firehouse, okay? 
Cook, right, because firefighters, when they're on duty, they live inside the firehouse, and one of the things firefighters like to do is they like to eat, okay? And the reason why they like to eat is so they can stay strong, right? We, we eat good food, but what, every so once in a while, somebody has a birthday. Even firefighters have birthdays. See, we have all these birthday things up here. You heard someone before singing, maybe, while I was reading the story, singing happy birthday. So when you have a birthday, what do you, what's something that people get? Presents. What else? Cake. Right. So we're going we're gonna to read a story about Elliot. He's, he's a firefighter and how he gets a cake. Okay? Making a cake. Okay, the name of the story is Elliot Bakes a Cake. Well, it says here Elliot Moose, but we'll call him Elliot Firefighter for today, okay? Elliot Firefighter was bursting with excitement. Today was a very special day. He raced around the corner to find his friend. To find his friend's socks. It's Lionel's birthday, said Elliot. Let's bake a cake. A cake, cried Sox. That's a great idea. Kind of an odd name, right? Sox. Anyway, while Sox got ready, Elliot hurried upstairs. Amy and Paisley would want to help too. It's Lionel's birthday, he called. Let's bake a cake. Oh, yes, said Amy. Lionel needs a cake. Oh, boy, cried Paisley. We get to bake. Elliot, Amy, Amy, and Paisley ran down to the kitchen. Socks rushed in behind them. Together, they told Beaverton their plan. Brilliant, said Beaverton. He dug through his cupboard and pulled out a card. Look, he said, I have just the recipe. What's the recipe do? Do you know? Yeah, it tells you how to bake the cake, the things that you need to put inside the cake. Right, sometimes the recipe is on the back of the box. So they quickly found everything they needed. Then Beaverton began to read the directions. First, we separate the eggs, he said. Separate the eggs, said, asked Elliot. What does that mean? It's easy, laughed Sox. Just get two key teacups and put an egg into each one. Elliot was surprised. Didn't eggs have to be cracked open? That's okay. That's okay. Now cream the butter, read Beaverton. Cream the butter, asked Elliot. How do we do that? Simple, said Paisley. He dropped a big square of butter into a bowl and put in some cream. But when he stirred, they wouldn't mix together. Beaverton frowned. Try adding the sugar, he suggested. It was Amy's turn. She added the sugar and stirred round and round. Look, yelled Sox, it's mixing. Elliot smiled. Now they were getting somewhere. Next, we beat the eggs, said Beaverton. Beat the eggs, repeated Elliot. What does that mean? Nobody knew, so Elliot cracked open the eggs and stirred them into the big bowl. He mixed and mixed and mixed. It's starting to look like batter, declared Sox. Elliot wasn't so sure. It looked lumpy. Wasn't batter supposed to be smooth? Hmm. Time to add the milk and flour, announced Beaverton. In went the milk, in went the flour. Then Be Beaverton added a spoonful of baking powder. So our cake will be nice and tall, he said. They took turns stirring until most of the lumps were gone. It looks like proper batter now, said Paisley. I think you're right, agreed Beaverton. Elliot and Sox poured the batter into a pan and placed it gently in the oven. Everyone gathered to watch the cake bake. How will we know when it's done, asked Elliot. Beaverton checked his recipe. When we touch the middle of the cake, it will spring up, he said. It will spring up, Elliot? Elliot was amazed. 
He stirred, stared eagerly through the oven window looking for the first hint of movement. After a short while, Beaverton opened the oven and Elliot touched the cake. But it didn't spring up. It wobbled. The next time they checked the cake, it looked just right. But when Elliot touched the middle, it didn't spring up. It didn't even quiver. They put it back in the oven and began to make the icing, the frosting. When they were finished, they checked the cake again. It still didn't spring up. It didn't jump up. It just sat there. This cake's not planning to move at all, declared Elliot. And it's looking awfully dark. Hmm, that's not good. Socks peered over Elliot's shoulder. Oh, no, she wailed. Elliot's heart sank. He looked at Socks. Lionel's cake was burnt. <coughs> the kitchen was silent. Everyone stared at the cake. It wasn't just a little burnt. It was very burnt. Elliot struggled to hold back his tears. There would be no birthday cake for Lionel. That's sad. Yep. Let's see what they do. After a few unhappy minutes, Elliot brightened. We can fix it, he said. Bit by bit, he cut off the outside of the cake. Isn't it getting awfully small, last socks? Yes, but with the burnt pots off, at least it will taste good. Next, Elliot cut the little cake into three layers. Amy spread jam on two, and Paisley covered the top with icing. Pretty good. It looks great, said Elliot, but a birthday cake should be extra special. They got back to work and decorated the cake. And when they were done, it was the most beautiful cake they had ever seen. You see it? At last, they were ready to surprise Lionel. The five friends carried their cake up the stairs, one careful step at a time. They were so excited that it was hard not to giggle. Shh! whispered Elliot. He'll hear us. But Lionel was reading. He didn't suspect a thing. Happy birthday, Lionel. My stars, gasped Lionel. What a beautiful cake. They all cra crowded around while Lionel made his wish, blew out the candles, and served the cake. There was just enough to give everyone a tiny piece. Mmm, said Lionel. This is the best cake I have ever tasted. Everyone agreed. It was the best cake they had ever tasted. Yep. And right here on this last page is the recipe for a very special cake. So maybe all of you can ask your parents or your teacher <laughs> to get this book. And it has the recipe in the back. And maybe this is something you could do at home. Bake a cake. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very, very much. Perfect. <laughs>